Hello, welcome to my pre-algebra review series. This video covers Chapter 9, Section 4, titled, Draw a Diagram. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed your knowledge and ability to draw a diagram using a familiar three-step procedure. Please leave a like if you find this video to be helpful, and give your classmates a heads up too. It will more than likely help them, and it certainly will help this channel to be seen by more students. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I read them and do my best to address each as time permits. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you. Let's go to it. Objective 1. Drawing a Diagram. Math Strategies in Action. Car designers rely on computer design programs to create, test, and modify their plans. The process of drawing a diagram helps them to discover any problems they may have and to see possible solutions. Drawing a diagram is an important problem-solving tool. Example 1a. It's a real-world problem we're going to solve here. How many diagonals does an octagon have? So, under read and understand, it means read your problem and, and make sure you understand everything that you're being asked. So, it says, what is an octagon? Well, an octagon is a polygon, a polygon with eight sides. Okay, uh, to try to draw one, it's got a line here, a line here. A line here, I draw them like this, and then I just have to connect these. Okay, there's eight-sided figure. It's supposed to be really symmetric, but eh, that's as good as I draw. Then it says, what is a diagonal? A diagonal is a line segment, a line segment that connects Two non-consecutive, oops, non-consecutive vertices. And what's a vertex or a vertice? So the vert is going back up here to the little this hexagon that I drew. Each one of these points right here, this one, this one, this one, these are considered the vertices. It's like the verse, there are little angles here, right? So this is the vertex of the of the angle. Each one of these form an angle. The more sides there are, the smoother this circle gets. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so a vertex, so that's so a, a diagonal is something that connects the non-consecutive. So from this, if this is point A, and this is point B here, or vertex B and vertex A, A and B are already connected. So I can't go between those two. A diagonal then goes between A, I'm going to change colors to red, and C. So we're going to go to C over here. So a, a, a diagonal goes from A to C. And then if there is a D, it would go from A to D, and then A to E, right? And then A to F, but then an A to G. But it can't go to this point because it already has a connection between A and and here, okay? So you kind of see that? Those are diagonals. Okay. Okay, example 1b is just the next slide in our example 1 problem, a real world problem. Now we're at the plan and solve. So one strategy for solving the problem is to draw a diagram and then count the diagonals. <clears throat> Excuse me. The octagon has eight sides. You can draw five diagonals from one vertex in an octagon. Okay? So this is just like the picture I had drawn in the previous slide. So we have A to B. You see, we can't go A to B. It's already already connected right here. And B to C is already connected. So a diagonal, it goes from one point across to one that's not already connected. So A to C, I'm going to change it to blue. Come on, blue. Come on, blue. There you go. I'm going to change it. So A to C is a diagonal, and A to D is a diagonal, and I already did A to E, and A to F, and A to G. 
Okay. And they're all listed right here. They're all line segments listed. A to G, A to F, A to E, A to D, and A to C. Some of the, are just some of the diagonals? Because there are more. What about the ones that go from the other points? We'll talk about those. There are five diagonals drawn from a vertex A. <clears throat> Copy the diagram now and find the number of diagonals you can find from vertex B. Oh, problem gets a little tougher. How many diagonals can you draw from vertex C? Well, how many can you draw from B? Well, let's go look at B. So from B, we already have, we have one from A. You can't count the AB line. You can go from B. I'm going to change this to gold, I guess. We can go from B to H. Okay, I'll draw through it. B to H. And then we can go to B to G. Okay. And then B to F and B to E, and B to D. <clears throat> you can't go B to C, okay? So, <clears throat> there are five diagonals drawn from vertex A. Copy it. Now, how, can you, how many did we get from B? Well, we had one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now, when we get to the next one here, it says, how many diagonals can you draw from vertex C? Well, now you're going to see the way I'm going to use a different color again. I'm going to use, um, uh, I've used blue, green, I guess. So now, though, from C, can I go from C to B? No, because that's already a given that you can't do that path. How about C to A? Well, we can't go C to A either because it's already drawn. Can I go from C to D? Uh, excuse me, from D to H? Yes, there is no diagonal from D to H. How about from D to G? There is no diagonal from D to G. How about from D to E or F? There is no diagonal from D to F. So in this case, I can't go to A because it already has one. I can't go to B, it already has one. Or so oh, I have one, two, three. So we have five, we have five here, and then it says there's four. I mean, oh, four. Wait, where's the fourth one? From, oh, from vertex C. Uh, excuse me. I did vertex D. There's three from from C. Let's, let me undo these. Let me undo these. Oh, I can't undo them too easily. But I can undo here this one. This one. Won't erase. I don't know what's going on here. That one erased now, finally. There, it's gone. <clears throat> okay, we got to go from C. Excuse me. Uh, see, I'm not even reading the problem <clears throat> correctly. <laughs> Sorry. So let's go back now, and we're going to pick up. I still have the green. So I'm going to go back and pick up green. And we're going to do it from C. Okay, so from C, we have what? We have from C, we can go to A. From C, we can go to H. From C to H. We can go C to G. We can go C to F. And we can go C to E. One, two, three, four. So we could do five from, from B. We can do four from C. And we'll find out later that each one is going to reduce now. But that's so far, that's good. We've got that information. <clears throat> okay, example 1C of this real world problem. Now we're going to plan and solve continued. We're going to look a, more, a little more deeply into these segments that we're drawing. It might be helpful to organize your results as you count, in a diag uh, count the diagonals. Make a table like the one below on the right to fill in the number of diagonals for each vertex. Do not count diagonals twice. And a segment from A to C is the same as a segment from C to A. We, I discussed that in the previous slide. Then add, to the, then add to find the total number of diagonals. And at the very bottom, we're going to get the total number. Well, as you see, the bottom already has 20. At the very bottom down here, we already have 20 diagonals. Right here, 20. And when we started off, we had... 5 and 5, like I counted on the other page, then 4, and then I think we did 3D ahead of the game a little bit. We're going to find out that when we do it, when you do 
D. You can't go to C. You won't go B is already to D. A already went to D, so you can't do that. You'll only be able to go to H, um, to H, G, and F. So that will be three. Okay? And then once you, so I'm going to draw them in now with this blue pen. So from C, you can go from C to H, A, B, C, I mean D, rather. Well, what happened? Oh, I didn't, we didn't draw in the C, the C's either. But for D, um, for C, I'm going to do C. We've got C goes to H, C goes to G, C goes to F, and C will go to E. Then if I change colors to red, D is now going to go from, you can see it's already got a line here. You can't count that one. Can you count the H to D? Yes, because that doesn't have a line. So we can go a segment from H to D, and I thought I changed color to red. Now it's changes color. I'll go through it again. Red. Okay. And then we can go from D to G. D to G. And we can go to D to F. Not a very good drawer, but, and that's the three. Now for E, E is here. E has already got a line here, but it, it's got a line to A. Um, it, e does not have a line. Uh, it definitely has to have a line to B, E because we've already gone through B, gone through C. So the only ones we haven't done is E has not gone to H. So E has not, what color am I using, red? Uh, let's use green. E has not gone to H, so we're going to go to H with green here. And E has not gone to G. So there's two. So we want, oh, look at this. Two, all we can do. Now how about F? So from F, I'll pick a golden color here. From F, we can only go to, can we go to A? Where is the only one we can do from F? The only one we can do from F is right here, from H to F. All the others are taken. So there's one here. And then G, there's none we could, G has something to every, every it goes one, two, three, it's got to have all of them. Here's this one, this one, this one. And we know it already had one to B because it picked, we just didn't count it earlier. It's got that one to B. So they're all filled in. So if we add these up, we have 5, 10, 17, 19, 20. These are going to be zeros down here. You can't do these. So there's a total of 20 of them. The rest of them are all completed. Now it's going to get a little more interesting, I think. So now we're going to look back and check. Counting the diagonals after they have all been drawn is not an easy task. To check your results, you may want to try a different approach. Start with the figures with the fewer sides and see where the pattern and the total numbers of diagonals takes you as you increase your number of sides. So let's see what happens. Now we're just going to say the number of si sides or how many diagonals are we cutting? That's what we want to know. Is there a pattern that we can relate the number of sides to the number of diagonals? Or the number of vertices to the number of diagonals? Let's see. So uh, start with fewer sides and see whether these patterns to a total number of diagonals as you increase the number of sides. So for three, for a triangle, how many are there? How many diagonals can we draw on a triangle? We're already, every side, every vertex is already connected by the, uh, to another vertex. So as we see here, there are none that we can draw for a triangle. For a quadrilateral, we can draw two, because there are these two diagonals. So there are four, three sides gives us zero, four sides gives us two, five sides, a pentagon, gives us how many? One, two, three, four, five. So we get five for a pentagon. How about a hexagon? A hexagon, we get how many diagonals? We get nine. I'm not going to be able to count them all, but there's nine. They're telling us they're nine. Okay, 
So we'll look at a pattern going on here. We're going to see, is there a pattern? Notice the total number of diagonals increases as you increase the number of sides of the polygon. Well, that's true. First, the number increases by 2. That's this one. Then it by 3. Then it goes to, it, incre it, it increments by 2. From 0 to 2 is, three, is 2. Then the next one goes to 3, which is 2 to 5. 2 to 5 is 3. Okay, and then from 5 to 9 is 4. Okay, does it say that? that and then to 3, then it increases by 4. Continue this pattern and check your results. Well, what's the pattern? So it goes 2 for 4, for 4 angles, 5, so now we've got one more. So starting at 4, one more gives us 5. Then when you add one more to the hexagon, it's 4. So when we go to a heptagon or a septagon, whichever one that is, it would have to be 3, 4, 5. 9 and 5 is going to be, well, there's nowhere to draw it, but it's going to be 14 for a heptagon or 7-sided. Seven 7 sides are going to give us 14. What are 8 sides going to give us? Well, when we get to 8 sides, it's going to go from 14, which was an increase of how many? 4. 14 is an increase of 5. So from 14, it's going to be an increase of 6. So we're going to be at 20. Okay. And where did that put us? That put us back at that hexagon, which we found had 20 sides. So this right now, this pattern we looked at gave us the 20 that we saw in the previous slide. Okay. We checked our pattern. There it is. Okay, example one, check your understanding. It's your turn. So see if you can answer this. How many diagonals does a decagon have? A decagon, well, that's a 10, deca, decimal 10. A decagon has 10 sides. Let's look at the table and see if we can figure it out. Go ahead, do it. When you get back, we'll t do it together. Okay, now I'm assuming you have the table filled in, and I'm sure it's 100% correct. So let's go through it together. And then I'll show you, at the end, there's a little formula we can use. It'll tell you exactly how many, no matter how many vertices you have, right? So it says, how many diagonals does a decagon have? Look at the table. Let's look at the table. So again, you've seen that we can start at three sides, or three vertices, and we have zero. And then it jumps to two for four. And then it jumps from five, for five vertices, it jumps up three from two to five when we go from four to five. And then when we go from to six, it jumps by four. So when we jump by seven, it's going to jump, it's going to jump by five. And five and five and nine is 14. Okay. And then from 14, when we get here, it's going to jump up to six. So 14 and six is 20. And guess what? Remember the octagon from the earlier slide? At the bottom of the table, it said there were 20. And that's correct. There it is. How about 9? So we go from 8 to 9. That's an increase of 1. So now we're at 7. So now we're going to be 20 plus 7. It'll be 27. Okay. And then we get to 10. It's a jump from 7 to 8. It's a jump of 1. 7 to 8 is 27. And 8 is how much? 35. And that is the answer. 10 gives you 35. And I told you we'd look at a formula. Well, the formula that you can actually calc this, calculate this with is S is equal to, okay, V times V minus 3 over 2. Okay, so the number of segments, S, is equal to the number of vertices times the number of vertices minus 3, all divided by 2. So let's try one. So S equals, let's try one that we know, 7. Okay, so 7. 7 times 7 minus 3 over 2. And what does that give us? 7 minus 3 is 4. 7 times 4 is 28. 28 
divided by 2 is how much? 14. And as you see, 7 gives us 14. We could do this one here, this 10 if you want. Uh, let's, how, how many vertices? 10. So S, how many, how many segments? 10 times 10 minus 3 over 2. The answer here is 10 minus 10 is 7. 7 times 10 is 70 over 2. And that equals 35. And guess what? There's our 35. So that's a little surprise for you there, I guess. How's that?